Hey there, this is the Armadillo, and this is my review of the terrific NX70 camera. I've wanted to go from tape media to tapeless media for a long time in shooting camcorder, so in shooting camcorder footage, and uh, when I saw the NX70, I was really excited about it, and I thought this might be exactly the camera, and I ordered one, and I've been using it, and it really is as advertised. Now, you ask, since I'm doing an NX70 review, where the heck's the camera? Well, you're looking at it. Well, you're not exactly looking at it. You're looking at it, looking at me. So you're getting an idea of what the image is like just from that. And uh, I want to talk about the camera and tell you how fantastic it is, um, how wonderfully it works in all kinds of situations. Uh, but I also want to point out some weakness. So if you're thinking about buying an X70, be forewarned. I think I have something that will really help you a lot and save you a lot of frustration when you're shooting outdoor video in bright, bright sunlight. The NX70 is fantastic at low light. It really is super. But when you take it outside, when you run the f-stop all the way up, uh, it's still uh, it's a tremendous amount of overexposure when you have all that bright sunlight. So what to do? Well, I'll tell you what to do, but first I'll tell you what not to do. First of all, don't fall into to despair and start shooting in auto, okay? Uh, the auto on this camera is very, very good, but it still has all the faults that auto has, all the things that make you hate automatic exposure, automatic um, on these cameras. Uh, when light changes and all that, it's just terrible, you know that. So, no need to go into that, no need to beat a dead horse. So, uh, what don't you do? If you can't get the exposure that you want with your iris, then what do you do? What do you do besides go to auto? Well, the one thing I looked into were neutral density filters. And I found that Tiffin neutral di density filters probably could be the great solution. They offer a, an array of neutral density filters all the way up to a, a 0.9 which gives you about three extra stops and so I was really excited about that and I ordered some but uh, you know you have to wait when you order things until they come in so I decided to see if I could look around while I was waiting and find some Tiffin filters in the Dallas area no can do it's certainly not on a Sunday most of the camera shops are closed except I found one camera shop in the North Dallas uh, that was open, that's Wolf Cameras, and they didn't have any Tiffin filters, but they did have 37 millimeter neutral density filters, and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll give it a shot, they're not that expensive anyway. So I went up there, and I bought a neutral density filter. But it wasn't a set of neutral, neutral density filters, it was a special neutral density filter made by that's kind of hard to say, but made by Polaroid. And I want to show you that density filter right now. Here's the item I'm talking about. It's the HD multi-coated variable range neutral density camera filter. That's a mouthful. And here's a better shot of it. There you can see it has an inner and outer ring. There it is on the camera. And essentially you take that inner ring and rotate it to the left or to the right. And here's what happens. The density of it changes in an escalator-like fashion. So you have a full range from completely black to lighter and lighter. You see what that filter does? It's terrific. Instead of having several different density filters that you put on and take off depending on what the lighting is like, you have one neutral density filter that essentially is just as adjustable as the as the uh, iris is on your camera and it's terrific I left the camera shop and I did some shooting around Dallas and I want to show you the results that I got the first place I stopped in Dallas was a Greek Orthodox Church because of the terrific iconography and the artistic beauty that's always there and as you can see in bright bright sunlight 
there's the results that I get. Maybe that was a little overexposed there, but nothing you're seeing here has been enhanced at all. It's just like it came out of the camera. And I think that's also unenhanced. That one I did change. I didn't have to, I just changed it out of curiosity in Final Cut Pro X. But you see that's in bright, bright sunlight and you get excellent definition, no overexposure. And I think my f-stops are sitting somewhere around on 4.0 and everything's being controlled by the variable. Now there you can see this image right here and then there it is after I took it into Final Cut. So you can compare whichever you like. The original, there's the original, and then there's what I was able to do in Final Cut. Now it's really hard to resist showing off the stability of this camera. This is all handheld. Essentially, unless you're gonna do something that takes a long, long, long time, you don't really need a tripod anymore. Very cool, very smooth movements. Now we go from the sublime to the ridiculous. I wanted to show in bright sunlight what it is in a parking lot in the middle of a Dallas heat wave, 100 degrees. Okay, this is a shot starting completely in the dark and then we're moving. And this is all being controlled escalator-like by That's a pretty good shot right there. The yeah, F-stop is at 3.7. I'm going to move it down now. That's at 2.8. Now I'm back to 3.7. Now I'm just moving it. With the ND filter. There's I think about where we were. And I move it up just a little bit more. There's about where the ND filter, or where the 3.2 was. All right, now our Boston market is really uh, overexposed, so I'm going to. There's 3.7. Now Boston market has good exposure and that's 4.0 that's moving it with the f-stop of course now here we are moving it with the ND filter overexpose so anyway this is the coloration without the filter Okay, and I'm looking at the zebra. I'm going to try to replicate that zebra effect with the neutral density filter. Now, there it is, uh, about that same light level, but as achieved with the neutral, dens neutral density filter. So you can compare back and forth. Now these are just some fun shots I took around Dallas. I was down on Riverfront Drive, which Boulevard, which uh, turns into Irving Boulevard as you go west. There's uh, Chase, that's where I have all my money, what little there is, and they're taking all that anyway. And uh, then there's, uh, gee, I don't know what that building is. Uh, it's a really big building though. 
and there we are at 4.4 on the f-stop with the adjustment with the ND. Now you see that building right there? That was especially constructed for people in Dallas so they could, if they were confused about which way is up, they could always have a reference point. And uh, we all need that. And then uh, here's 4.0 on the f-stop and then the rest of it is controlled by the ND filter and basically to keep all that bright sunlight from overexposing as you see the bright sunlight in the little strips there and there's Reunion Tower which my wife keeps telling me that I must go up in for some reason or another okay so that's pretty cool huh but for all the good news there's also some bad news and one little piece of bad news right here is this guy right here and that is you can't really put this on uh, because of the way Sony has designed it you can't really put this on with the neutral densi density filter on unless you do a little um, a little work on it you just got to get medieval on certain parts and I'll show you the parts that I removed that enable me to put this guy on and still be able to operate that neut neutral density filter. Here's our lens protector. Essentially the problem is that ridge that you see in the corners, they used to go all the way across on this until I took a Fordham tool, sort of like a Dremel tool, and ground all that area out because it bumped into the filter. And once that was removed, then I had no problem actually putting the filter on, or putting the lens protector on, and it worked uh, perfectly fine. So this is what I recommend if you want to use this filter. All right, so that's pretty cool, and that pretty much solves our problem with our lens protector here in the front, and it actually opens and closes. I made a few little modifications, as I noted inside, and those are the results that I get with this neutral density filter and I'd, I'd really I'm sure the Tiffin filters are going to be terrific uh, but uh, this is as good as it gets in fact it's a it's a better neutral density filter than the, than the filters that I had on my big Sony cameras on the H1U and and so on and so forth and uh, so uh, I'm really excited about using this and that's the result I got outside in bright, bright, bright Dallas sunlight in the middle of the summer, so I know that this is going to be a terrific tool in the future, whether I'm shooting inside or whether I'm shooting outside. And I hope you'll consider getting a neutral density filter of one type or another before you buy an NX um, an NX70, uh, because it really makes the outside shooting so much better. Otherwise, it's just virtually impossible, and you have to put up with shooting in auto all the time and it's just one big mess from beginning to end. So I hope this helps you and good luck with your shooting. If you get an NX70 you got a fantastic camera with the best stability that I've ever seen in a camera as you can see from the video that I just showed you.